Hi, Scott Bruder here. So this video popped up when I looked at a small stack, and of course I've added a couple more, uh, of network switches. Really, I want to know who's aware of like what they do and what the differences are. Like I know a lot of people look at them and they say, oh, I need X number of ports, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what I want to do is I want to take a few moments here and talk to all of you and, you know, ask some really good questions and find out if you're aware. Now, granted, I know all about all these different levels of switches and I know what they do and I know what they can't do and I know what applications they're good for. But I also know that a lot of people, you know, take a look at like one or two things. The first one is like number of ports, right? I know a lot of businesses are like, I have 32 computers. I need at least, you know, 48 ports and that will help me. You know, that's, that's just the beginning of the question, right? Because you ask yourself, it's like first is always going to be the age and the type of chipset inside, and then also the link speed. Like nowadays, um, most commercial businesses are running at, you know, one gigabit links. That's 1000 uh, megabits per second to your endpoint devices. Now, granted, there are many opportunities where you, you're doing things like uh, going faster, like they have a 2.5 gigabit link to endpoints, you have a five gigabit link, you have 10 gigabit link, and of course that's 10,000 megabits per second. You have a 40 megabit link. I believe there's a hundred megabit link. Now, most of the time, those links are used in, in some of our exchanges, our backends, our head ends. Um, but aren't at the access level. That's that level where your laptops and your cell phones and your access points and your uh, desktops are connecting to. Like I still feel that for the vast majority of businesses, it's one gigabit or 100 megabits per second. Uh, in residential, especially when you're getting into that pro-consumer market, prosumer, right? You're looking at your 2.5 and your 5 gigabits per second. And those are, those are super important uh, as well um, for file transfer back and forth. It's the same thing between using like USB 2.0 and upgrading to the new USB 3. Um, you want to make sure that you're, you know, utilizing... Uh, time saving, right? Like if, if it's something you do once a month and you need that bandwidth, eh. if every day you need that bandwidth, then of course you're going to make sure you have access to the resources. So I know all of you have been spending time looking at this switch stack. I'll see if I can flip the camera. I don't even know if I can. Uh, I can't flip the camera, so I'm not going to. Um, I have four switches in front of me today. These four switches all do completely different things and they are all different levels of functionality. So I'm going to start with the least effective one and go to the most effective one. Now, if you are an individual that says ports is all that matters, well, let's go down to the bottom. We have this Monker Link PoE 16 port switch. Right? This has 16 ports of PoE that'll run your cameras, that'll run your VoIP phones, that'll run things like that, and it has an additional two ports for uplink. This is not a smart switch. This is not a great switch. It's very low quality. It has no remote manageability. So if any of the 16, 18 devices plugged into this has a problem, that's it. You don't know. You have to actually physically go to site. And with that, you know, there's a lot of cost, things like that. There's no internal monitoring. There is no analysis of functionality. So this switch really is, is dumb. There's nothing to it to show you any sort of resources to help you solve your problem. Um, with that, you know, you're, you're at a loss. You physically have to follow the wires, see where they go, and, and take it from there. But it gives you 16 ports uh, with PoE and another two ports for uplink. So this is, this is perfect, perfectly great um, for dumb devices. But 
I would never trust this. I'd use this for like security cameras or some other passive device that you never ever need to talk to. Now the next item I want to look at is, you know, up here way at the top, this little guy. This is a TP-Link smart switch. So it has a web interface. I can do some kind of monitoring. I can see some sort of access. I can see what devices are connected to it. Um, it has four ports of PoE, so that'll power your cameras and your access points and your phones, and has four ports that are not. So there's not lots of ports, but from this 16-port device that's dumb, has absolutely nothing going for it, it has more because if I'm across the country as a support person, right, and I need to inspect this, I can actually log into a little website that's built into this device and do some analysis, see if there's been any kind of errors or see how much load or see which devices are connected to it. Now, granted, it's only eight ports, four ports for just non-power and four ports for, but it's a, it's a big step up. It doesn't provide any, any actual ability to manage or control because control is super important um, over the things that are connected to it, but it gives you the ability to see it. And seeing is a lot of the importance of being able to troubleshoot, right? Because that's going to save me a car trip to find out, oh, look, it's got unplugged, you know, things like that. Now, when I pan back out, the ones that, you know, are kind of suited for business live in the middle, right? We have two switches here. We have at the top a 10 port or an eight port plus two SFP Cisco Meraki. Now, the great thing about Cisco Meraki is it exists on the cloud. It gives you cloud management. It has lots of configurability. Um, it has features, it has monitoring tools, it has things like that. Granted, it also has eight ports of PoE and two ports of uh, SFP. So you can plug in like another Ethernet or maybe like a fiber optic adapter, things like that. This device is going end of life this year. So it's, it's not the best example, but it's a good example of, you know, a, a switch that's monitored, it's managed, it's PoE, it has the ability to kind of control it because these ports in addition to like what you have happening on the smart switches, you have a lot of good control uh, over on this on these switch ports uh, remotely. You can manage it from the cloud. You can manage it from the other side of the world. You can see when things go up and down and how much they're using, and you can limit what people are are transferring. Those other two switches, they have no control like that. This switch can set throttling and bandwidth requirements and block devices. Like you can do things like MAC address filtering and a MAC address is like that serial number on a physical device. So this device here gives you a lot of ability to kind of lock down, manage, monitor, and it's all done in the Cisco Meraki cloud. So you have the option to kind of dig in deep set up reports, you know, things like that. Granted, new versions are available, but this is a great switch. But then we break it down here to, to one of my favorites, and it's a small form factor, and it is a access switch, is a Cisco 2960. This switch here, you know, you log into it and you get a terminal. Like, it has like, a, if any of you are asking, like a DOS interface. But with that, you can set per port, per interface, you can set monitoring and limits and traffic uh, restrictions. And you can set up uh, situations where like if someone tries to put another switch into one of these ports, it locks it out. Uh, you have security, you have kind of bandwidth restrictions. And at the end of the day, like this 2960 network switch is what you should have your computers connecting to. Now, granted, there are bigger 2900 series um, on the Cisco platform, and uh, granted, the competitors like Juniper and HPE have their switching, but this Cisco is is kind of the the high level of what you need. Like, if you ran a business and you had workers and you had office spaces and you needed to make sure that you know things were restricted or monitored or managed, you could do that. 
you could also set up like power limits. So you could set it up so, you know what, you could plug a phone in. That's fine. A PoE phone will turn on and work. But if you plugged into an access point or some other device, it would say, that's too much power. I'm not going to permit it. And the 2900 series is, is great. It's fully manageable. You could set it up so that like it was a port that only allowed like 10 different people's laptops to connect to it, right? You could do port security that said, you know, if it's not one of these 10 different people's laptops, I don't want them to do it. If I had some kid come in off the street and plug in his Xbox, I wouldn't want it to work. And that's something you could do with, with this level of access switch from Cisco. And there's lots of different things. And I what I really want to show there is I want to get all of you thinking about what you're using in your environment. You're not buying that $139 switch from Amazon to link up your computers may seem like a good deal, but you're doing a disservice to yourself, whether it be at home or in the enterprise or in the small business. What I want to put out to all of you is definitely like think about it, you know, find out what you need, find out what you want, make a use story, right? It's all about project management, like make a use story, find out, do the cost analysis. But for any of you that know anything about these switches, like I want you to comment, I want you to ask questions, I want you to contribute to, you know, this uh, YouTube video or wherever you're watching it these days. But if you're, a, if you're a business or a home and you have questions about network switches, let me know. Like, I love to give free advice and I make my money off of making things work. So take your time, ask some good questions, find out what you're doing and communicate. You know, comment below in the uh, chat and DM me on any of my social media. You can find me at scottb.ca. And all of my contact information is at the bottom there. So if any of you want to comment on things that I've gotten right or gotten wrong, feel free. Otherwise, I hope to see all of you in the future. I appreciate you watching and thank you. Have a great day.